You got your you got you got your knee pads today, you got your elbow braces today, you probably go up on the bus, baby. And me too. <laughs> I ain't leave myself out. I, I take no house. That includes me too. Amen. 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 Genesis chapter 2. Thus the heavens and the earth was finished. Amen. And all the hosts of heaven. And on the seventh day God rested. Amen. Amen. Oh Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. I want to, for the sake of time, I want to skip a little bit. Amen. 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 Let's start with verse number 18. Verse number, uh, number 7. And the Lord brought man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became what a living soul. And God planted man in the garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground man uh, made the Lord to grow every tree that is present to the sight and good for food. And the tree also of life also, uh, life also in the midst of the garden and, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the rivers went out to Eden to water the garden. And from this it, it was parted and came into the foreheads. The name of the first is Pison. That is that and that is it which compassed the whole land of Havilah. Some people believe the land of Havilah, and you know, it's somebody, like, you know, it's in the Middle East, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There's uh D Dillium and Oxion stone. And the name of the rivers is Gosha. Go on. Go uh, on. And the same is that compassed the whole land of Ethiopia, which is in Africa. Amen? Amen. And the name of the river is Hedekiel. That is it which goes with east to with Assyria. And the four rivers of the Euphrates. Amen? Amen? Amen. Which is up there toward uh, uh, Iran, Iraq, Syria, and all that kind of stuff. Amen? And the Bible said, the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded man, saying, of every tree of the garden, thou mayest free to eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For the day that thou eat it thou, thou shalt surely. Somebody say, surely die. Surely and the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. Oh my goodness. God said, not man, God saw the need for relationship. God saw the need for marriage. Amen? Amen. Amen. Man, let's see it. Amen. God saw it. But before God ever gave man a woman, he gave him a job. Y'all don't hear me? Some men want a woman, but you ain't got no job. Some men want a wife, but you ain't got no means of taking I told you, I ain't holding nobody hostage today. If you're a man and you ain't got no job, don't come running in no super faith talking about the Lord told me that you gonna be my wife. If you ain't got no job, you better have a means of taking care of that woman. Uh-huh. I love you don't pay no bills. My mama taught me as a little child, say, hey, I love you don't pay no bills. I love you, baby. I didn't love you. Love you what? That means I got to stay, you got to stay with me, you got to live off me. Oh, Shondo, you got to move in the house with me. You got to get on my section eight. Oh, praise the Lord. You need to be mad enough to, oh my goodness, we can get in the woman's face. Do we willing to take it? I told you. I ain't holding no hostage here. Before you get it back, preachers talking about the Lord called you, and you better have a job before you step in these super space. Somebody gotta eat. And if you don't go get it, she gotta go get it. Somebody got to go get it. Somebody gotta go get it. Baby, it's cold out there. You better put on extra and, 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 and extra coat. Put on extra coat. I want you to catch a cold. Put some mittens on and some love and go get it. Amen. Oh my, I can't help him a little bit. God gave the male man, Adam, instruction. See, religion will tell you every time you say Adam, you're talking about what? Man. The male man, right? It ain't so. 
But in this verse, in verse 17, he's talking to the male man, Adam. Right. What? Pastor, what you teaching over there now? Well, then you don't believe it. Genesis chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. <laughs> this is the book of the generation of, 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 of Adam. In, the, in that the Lord created man. In the state of the Lord created man. In the likeness of God made he him. Male or shadow and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam. In the day when they was created. So when you refer every time you see the word Adam in the Bible sometimes it might be talking about the male man and sometimes it might be talking about homo sapiens which is man Yes. Amen. About what? The tree of life. Amen? Amen. Let's go a little bit to the word of God. Let's go a little bit. I told you we're gonna, we're gonna I, you go if hey, just get ready. I want you. Didn't I, didn't I warn you? Amen. 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 I told you. I, I somebody said he told me. He told me. So you get mad, don't get mad at me, get mad at the word. So the origin and the beginning of God, God had an order set up. Amen? Oh, my Lord. Can I take a little bit more in the word of God? Say, Lord, help me. Drop down at Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife. I said leave. Leave the cleave. I want to see you back home over here unless you're visiting. We got sad and got quiet until now. Unless you're visiting. Go home to your own sheep. Take our shadow. Leave the clean. Amen. 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 Got to hold on to it. Wait a minute. I got to hold on to you. Come in, Mama Jane. Come on up here. Let me hold you. Just let me hold you a little bit. Give my hand up here so I can hold on to her. That means I'm holding on to this woman. She can't go over here. Where you going? You better not go too far because I'm holding on to you. That's right. What? You going over there? But I'm holding on to you. You're sit back down. I'm holding on to her. You got to cleave unto that woman. You got to do it. Can't nobody do it for you. Ain't the preacher, the pastor, the bishop, the apostle, the church mother, your mama, your daddy, don't make you cleave unto your wife. The responsibility of cleaving to that woman of God comes to you as the man of God. So if the man ain't working, it's because you ain't holding on tight enough. Amen. <laughs> we may have been reconciled with differences. Show me that in your in my Bible. I don't know. You might have one of the funny Bibles that got reconciled with differences. And I don't read, I don't read them type. I only read the King James. That's it. Amen. Amen. And I have not seen in the King James. Irreconcilable differences. I need me a wife that's got my. You need some glasses. Give her some glasses. My goodness, go get her some readers. Dollar store selling to you for about ten uh, ten dollars. Give her some readers. If she don't share your vision, maybe you need to give her some reading glasses that she may share your vision. Don't put away the woman because she is not lining up with your vision. If she's the one that God said in the process of time, she's going to line up with the vision that God gave you. Amen. Your vision is of God. If your vision is go down and rob PCN or PNC, baby, I don't care how many readings he gets you, you need to go your way. Baby, I, baby, I got something to do today. You got that plan to ride for our PCN or PNC? I ain't going with you today, baby. I ain't driving you down now. I ain't gonna be your getaway ride. I don't even know who you are. You get put in jail. Don't call me. I've already told you. You got no business going down there trying to get some money when you need to go to work. 
Yeah, I want, I'm gonna make it quick, quick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it quick. Yeah, you better get you a job. That's right. That's the only quick way to do it. Is get you a job and work OT. It's called overtime. It's called overtime. It's called overtime. Yes, Let me get back to the word of God. Genesis chapter three. I don't want to vacillate too much. Genesis chapter three. Now the serpent were more subtle than any piece of the field which God, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, as God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Yeah, God did say that. He said. Mm -hmm. And the woman said unto the servant, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree of the, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it, Neither, you, neither shall you touch it, least you die. So she knew of two specific instructions. Don't eat of it and don't touch it. It's hard to eat something you don't touch. Everything I tell, you ain't got no business putting your hands on. Everything I tell, you ain't got no business touching. Oh my goodness, you'll stay saved sometimes. How do you know it's the devil talking? 
Because he's talking to your flesh. Child, if you were my woman, woo, my woman told me a long time ago, if you just get with me, you won't have to worry about me. You won't want no other woman. I got scared. Because I thought she was telling the truth. I thought she was telling the truth. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm going to want no other woman? That sounds like witchcraft to me. That sounds like voo, 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 voo. I don't want to say a word. Lord, have mercy. See, the devil will start talking to you. Women, I'm telling you right now, if you see that a man ain't no good, don't even, oh, Lord. Mm -mm. You know he got three babies over here and over there, and everyone ain't take care of nobody. Why are you talking to him? You think you're going to change this man? Little church girl, you think you're going to change this man? Got a wife over here, got a wife over there, child of man, got a wife everywhere. You think you're going to change that man? People scared to say anything. God say, I didn't love you. God say, say, I love you. I love you. Don't he say in the hole and say, I love you. Don't say, I love you, I love you. When the women hear the word, I love you, it's a wrap. He look nice, he look cute, he said, I love you. It's a wrap. Tripped up, tied up, tangled up in something that he said with his mouth and the man already know. If I can just talk with the woman, if I can just talk with her, if I can just get a number, praise the Lord. If I can just talk with her, I get into her ear. And when I get into her ear, I get to run the place. It starts with what gets in your ear. Oh, come on, look at me. Just me. It ain't only with women. We're made like that. Human beings are made like that. We are made to be influenced by what we hear. Y'all don't believe me? Who you like hanging with? Somebody tell you good all the time, somebody always got some negative to say. Who you like hanging around? Somebody got some positive stuff, right? You don't want to stick around, sister sour puss. No. You want to, you want to, you want to stick around jelly bean, jelly bean, llama bean girl that's pop, just popping and jumping and happy and hopping. Nobody want that. Y'all looking at me like that, right? Yeah. It's gonna be like that. Yeah. It's gonna be just like that. It's gonna be just like that. See, and the Bible says, listen to this. And the eyes of them both was open. And they knew that they was naked. And they sold fig leaves together. And they made themselves ready. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Now, I don't know if it was God doing the walking. I don't know if they was doing the walking. But one thing I do know, it was in the cool of the day. So that gives me a picture of what time it was. Either in the morning or in the evening time. It wasn't probably noonday. It was in the cool of the day. Amen? Amen. And the Lord came looking for him. Some of us don't have time to pray in the morning. God comes looking for you in the morning sometimes. And sometimes God comes looking for you in the evening, but you're too busy, you're too occupied. Amen? Amen? Amen. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and, and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the, the trees of the garden. And the Lord called on Adam and he did, and, and said unto him, and see the male Adam. Mm. He's calling for the man. When problems go wrong in your marriage, when problems go wrong in the family, the first person that God is coming to is the man. You say you say, you say you sanctify. Said to them, Where are thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. Amen. And I, oh my goodness, so was it the Lord walking? Perhaps. 
I heard the Lord while I was walking. I heard it in the garden. Amen? And I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And this, y'all stop right there. Stop right there. The natural tendency of man when they mess up is to go hide themselves from God. Do you understand? That's human nature. When we mess up, we want to go high. We don't go run in the crowd. We, when we mess up in the presence of God, we want to go hide ourselves and feel up being mad enough to come to God and say, Lord, I missed it. I ate up the tree. I had no business eating though. You gave me a scripture instruction, but I still had it anyway. We hide. I have one cute little dog. When she knows she messed up, she tried to go hide from me. <laughs> Baby, I ain't gonna whoop you. This is coming out. Yes. It's human nature to hide. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. And he said, I heard that voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. And I hid myself. And the Bible said, He said, Who told you that I was naked? As I eaten of the tree, where I commanded thee that thou should not eat. God already knew it. And the man said, the one, oh, Lord. And the man, see, there's two things you got to understand from the Garden of Eden. When you begin to, to dissect this chapter, you begin to dissect, dissect the chapter. When you begin to dissect the chapter, you see that when man make a mistake, one first thing you want to do is go hide himself from the presence of God. Number two, the second thing you want to do, if it's involving another person, you want to play the blame game. The blame game Starting in the book of Genesis is one of the first coping mechanisms that we deal with instead of manning up and confessing our sins, we start blaming each other. Yeah. Amen. I, am I crazy about in the book? True. Told you. If that's you, just say, it's me, Lord. Yeah. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, but me, oh Lord. Amen. Amen. Standing in your prayer. If you're the type of person that love the playing game, you got it honest. It's from your great, 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 granddad. <laughs> you got it honest. And that blame game mentality passed all the way down, all of them generations to you. Yeah. And now you wonder why you're blaming everybody else for your problem. <laughs> oh, come on, ain't just Adam? It's us in the flesh. Somebody say it's us. Yes. Amen? And what he said? The woman whom thou gave to be with me, she gave me a fruit of the tree, and I didn't eat. Now, this wasn't like, well, I believe if he didn't eat of it, the curse wouldn't have been applied. The curse was applied when he ate of it. Right. Amen? Amen? So even though he wanted to blame the woman, she didn't make him eat. She may have given it to him, but she didn't make it easy. And the Lord said unto the woman, okay, y'all gonna play this game, let's follow, let's see where it's going. What is that that thou hast done? And the woman said, uh, the serpent, the serpent beguiled. And I did it. And the Lord came unto the serpent, because thou hast done it. The serpent had nobody else to blame. He was messed up. <laughs> thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every tree of the field. And upon the belly, thou shalt go, and the dust shall I eat all days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thy seed. When I was in the United Pentecost Church, they I think it was explained to me that that represented uh, the seed of, of, of man, which is Christ, and, and the serpent represented the devil, and the enmity that, uh, you know, how that Christ was going to bruise his head, and he was going to bruise Christ's heel in death. I, I, I don't know if I got it exactly down pat, but I believe it was something on that level. <coughs> But see, and it said, I will put enmity between, but if you look at it from a naturalistic point of view, it also applies. How many of you let women go for people for snake? Raise your hand. Don't all do it at once. 
Y'all don't schedule a flick snakes, ain't you? Y'all schedule spiders, some of y'all schedule roaches, some of y'all schedule this, 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 this. And you tell me I'm missing a snake. And snake and me do not agree. That's some men here ain't gonna touch no snake. But what the man will probably do, he'll stomp that head. Stomp the head of that snake. Kill that stump on that snake head. And once you beat on that snake head with a shovel or something, that snake is gonna be dead. That's right. Amen? Amen. 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 I will put image between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Oh Lord, here we go. And unto the woman I said, I will greatly multiply her sorrow. Somebody say sorrow. sorrow. And thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thou desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Oh Lord. The man is supposed to be the head. Come on, man, don't be scared. I know you're scared. <laughs> Can I get to me and say amen? amen. Come on, man, don't be scared. Don't you sit back while you say amen. <laughs> you gotta say it though, say amen. <laughs> if you gotta look the other way, say amen. <laughs> amen. Now listen to this. What is our sorrow and conception? I don't know. It could be the pains of labor. Why is labor so painful? I, I've heard of some women that ain't saved who almost cuss their husband out when they're about to have that baby. They'll squeeze his hand and say some unpleasant words because they're in pain. But now they ain't the guy that sees you and got to deal with that, right? They make sleep and almost got to get a seat set. Uh-huh. Amen? He ain't finished yet. And now shall eat, and it says what? And, and has eaten of the tree, for out of which I commend you not. Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground. Talk about man now. Oh Lord, how many of y'all men love to go to work? Raise your hand. Amen. Verse number 17. Amen. And on the aim, Adam, he said, Because thou hast hearken unto the voice of thy wife, and eaten of the tree, which I commanded thee, not her, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed the ground for thy sake. In sorrow. Lady, you're going to have sorrow in the delivery process, in the delivery room with the pains of labor. And man, you're going to have pain trying to provide for your wife. That's why the boss man and the boss woman are so mean. How do you mean love where you raise your hand? And I cast out that line, dear boy. <laughs> I didn't love my child. God, it best be with my little bit of jobs. I don't have to do nothing except go in and work like a slave. I didn't live my job. I'm going to cast that blind devil out. Because the average man, I don't care how much you love your wife, you ain't crazy about that job. It's just a J-O-B. It's, a, it's just a J-O-B. Amen. Amen. You go in, you do what you got to do, and get on out of there. Amen. But see what? And he talks about that. Thorns also. And he said, Thou shalt eat of it, cursed to the ground, but I say, in sorrow shall I eat of it all the days of the life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat of the herbs of the field. And the sweat of thy face shall I eat bread, till thou return to the ground, for out of it was thou taken from the dust thou art, and dust thou shalt return. Amen. I say, I'm tired of this. Let's, get, let's go to the Father. Let's go to the Father. Let's go to, let's go to the book of Micah. Chapter number 2. Verse 14. Amen. Amen. Talk about my marriage and all the house. So women, men are supposed to be in charge in the house. Uh-huh. All right. You got a head. Now you got somebody to poke me over you. Uh -huh. I'm gonna get into some controversial stuff here today, y'all. I'm, I'm gonna get some. Uh, y'all sisters gonna be looking twisted at me. Don't, don't start turning your neck and doing like a snake. Got John talking some stuff. I'm getting upset. Uh huh. Man, I gotta read it. Micah chapter two, verse fourteen. Now, please. Read. Anybody got? It? Anybody got it for me? Go ahead and read. Micah chapter two. Micah chapter two, verse fourteen. What? Try Malachi. Try Malachi. 
Y'all, I get so excited sometimes to write out of stuff. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and read it because y'all hate. It's my fault, but I'm gonna go and read it. Amen. Uh huh. Preacher, go ahead and read uh, my, uh, Malachi chapter verse fourteen. Book of Malachi chapter number two and verse number fourteen. Yes, sir. Uh, yet ye say, wherefore, because the Lord have ha have been witnesses between thee and thy wife of thy youth. Against whom yet I'm gonna start again. Yet ye say, wherefore? Because the Lord have been witness between thee and thy wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously. Yet she is thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. And did not he make one? Yet had he the residue of the spirit, and wherefore one? that he might seek a godly seed. Therefore take heed to your spirit and let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. Read the next verse. For the Lord, the God of Israel, hath said that he have, that he hated putting away. Read again. For the Lord, the God of Israel, saith he hated putting away. Read again. For the Lord, the God of Israel, saith that he hated putting away. For, for one covereth violence with his garments, saith the Lord of hosts, therefore take heed to your spirit that ye deal not treacherously. So just because you're the head, man, don't mean that you treat your wife like trash. And if you ever think that God ain't gonna see he checking it out. I'm the head. Whatever I do, she's supposed to what, line up with you. No, you're going to get in trouble with God. Amen. I'm telling y'all, like God, look, you cannot treat your wife like trash. Amen. And the Lord don't see it. Amen. And the Lord don't know it. He know everything around the who you do. That's right. Amen. Everything around the who too. That's Jesus. right. He said, Help, he knows. Yes. I've seen in my life that some of these women that the men treat like trash, that woman got to be there to wipe their glue these masters. To wipe their dairy air. Right. Before they leave here. I've seen it. Yes. I've seen it with my own eyes. On more than one occasion. Yes. He go out there and cheat on his wife with this and that and everything that moves. And now he lying up on the bed, and none of those sugar mamas is interested in him no more. Oh, but he come dragging his broke down self on to his wife. Somehow, you remember, it's all coming back to me now. Yes. She live over here in her phone on this such and such and such. And such. Let me give her a call since I'm dying. Mm -hmm. And the woman say, what? What is it, Bill? <laughs> you know, I'm dying. I ain't got no place to live. Come bring your broke self, bust the cell, over to my house, and then I'll be here. I've seen that on more, I've seen that on several occasions. Amen? Amen. Yes, Lord. So you gotta be careful how you treat her. Somebody say, be careful how you treat this woman. You gotta be careful how you treat that woman. Amen? Amen. Mm. Let's go a little further. Amen. We ain't picked enough yet. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3 through 16. Yeah. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3 through 16. So say, you right, Pastor. You show sure right. I know my husband low down and dirty and nothing like you look. And the Lord told me about a prophet that came in town, prophet Boo Boo, that he got somebody else for me. I don't know if the Lord said that or not. You better got a prophet Boo Boo. Amen. 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 This is a longer message than I normally use. That's why I brought my chair up here. It's going to be a longer message. I'm going to try not to bury you. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter number 11, verse 2 through 16. Amen? Please bury me, y'all. Please, please, I beg you. Amen. Amen. Verse 3. Amen. And the Bible says, But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Amen? And the head of the woman is who? The man. man, stick out your chest. Say, hey, that's me. That's he's talking to <laughs> And the head of Christ is God. Every man praying 
Every man praying or prophesizing, having his head covered, this on his head. Yeah. But every woman that prayed, I want you to remember, right there, what I just said, right there. That prayed or prophesied with her head uncovered, dishonored her head. For it had even been all as, as if she was shaven. For if the woman be not what covered, let her also be shown. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shown or shaven, let her be covered. For the man indeed ought not to be covered, he said, not, ought not to cover his head. For as much as he is the image and the glory of, the, of God. But the woman is the glory of man. For man is not of the woman, but woman for the man. Ain't what it said in Genesis? God made a, a Eve for Adam, right? Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. Y'all women don't want to say amen on that, but it's true. For this cause of the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Nevertheless, in the, if man is it oh because Paul said I gotta go back and tell the truth. Nevertheless, is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. You gotta have both of them. Right. Right. You gotta have both of them. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also the woman. Your women have me and children. Amen. But all things of God. Judge in judge in yourself. Is it comedy that a woman pray under God uncovered? Listen to what I'm saying. This is talking about in church, right? Right, right. Does not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him. Right. Amen. You broke that long hair. You got them Jerry curls down your back. Jerry Remember Jerry curls? <laughs> Look as sweet as God can. All right. All right. All right. Let's go to the word. But if a woman have long hair, it is uh, it is what glory for her. Yeah. For her hair is given to her for a covering. Yeah. So the woman hair is what a covering. Right. Amen. 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 But if any man seem to be what contentious, that's what we don't wear hair covers over here. Now, if you want to wear a hat, wear your hat. Right. Hey, sport your hat. Right. Sport, but don't use this little thing over your head talking about that's a hat. There ain't no hair cover. If you're going to cover your head, beloved, cover your head. I don't care if you cover with a wig. Oh. Cover your head up. A hat like that. Before you start prophesying in the church, make sure your head is covered. That's the word. Amen, lights. Well, they ain't getting no amen from these people in here. <laughs> First Peter chapter 14. First Peter chapter 14. We're getting, we're getting ready to get messed. Somebody say, Pastor, you're getting ready to get messy now. I'm getting ready to get messy. I promise you I'm going to get messy. Let's go on. Go. First Peter chapter 14, verse number 34. Me and the love of this. Me and the love of this. Me and get ready. You about to get, you about, you about to feel like you somebody. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 34. <laughs> Let you women keep silent in the church. <laughs> I told y'all I'm going to be picking today. Let you women keep silent in the churches. For it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience as also say the law. If they learn anything, let them ask their husband at home. Number one, why your husband at church? Okay. For it is a shame for a woman to speak in the church. Come on, men. Don't say amen. Y'all scared of They scared. Hey, I see one amen. Can I get another? I see one amen. Somebody. That's amen, the word. Amen, the word. amen, All right. It said, what? Amen? Came the word God unto you, or came in under me, or you own it. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the thing that I wrote unto you are commandments of the law. Yeah. Woo, Lord. Yeah. If you put your pencil right down and mark that and highlight it, right. you'll be twisted. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Why would I say you'll be twisted? 
Because I read the Old Testament some 40 some times and I ain't read nowhere where it said a woman supposed to be quiet. Amen. But it says, as said the law. So there must have been a law in Corinth that told them women when you're in the midst of a sermon to be quiet. And you got preachers out there preaching this as though this is what God ordained. Right. In Corinthians, yes, you need to be quiet in the church and yes. ask your husband home. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. Let, me, let me do some more picking right now. How many of y'all got a husband at home? Raise your hand. I see one. I see two. I see three. Most women know. Y'all are blessed. Because the average woman to get into the Pentecostal church is single and have children. They don't have a husband at home. Amen. So it must not be talking to them because they ain't got nobody at home. Right. They ain't got to be quiet. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. You ain't okay. So, Pastor Knight, I, 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 somebody got twisted. They cut me off already, and they got mad at me. They gonna say Pastor Jones is is one of the more hard nosed preachers. He's a he's a legalist. I'm talking about Corinthians Church. Yeah. Let me let you know how I believe that this is not talking about the Torah. First Samuel chapter twelve. I mean chapter one, verse number twelve through seventeen. I'm going back to the Old Testament. Amen. Let's go back to the Old Testament. Okay. Might say, if women ain't got no business talking, let's go to the Old Testament. That's right. Let's see what they were talking in the Old Testament. I, I, I remember going to, I, I remember preaching, preaching so hard about that. Women ain't got no business talking in church. I checked out his choir. And women were saying, come on now. Well, how you get to sing and you can't talk? <laughs> Silent means silent. Right. No saying. Right. Don't correct your bad child. Don't spank Johnny. Let Johnny just go by. First Samuel chapter number 12. So many men are going to be like, what you just, what you just, what, what you doing, Pastor? You build, you destroying what you just built. Let's go to the fourth of the word. That's why you got to have precept upon precept, line upon line, little bit, little bit. We're going upon the law, going upon the old covenant, see what they done. First Samuel chapter number 12, I mean chapter number 1, verse number, number 12. And the Bible says it like this. Y'all bear with me, please. I'm going to try to get out as soon as possible. And it came to pass that she continued praying before the Lord. Right. That Eli walked her mouth. He was checking her out as she prayed in the temple. Amen. Was he checking her out because she didn't have no business talking? Y'all scared to save me. You don't know what I got coming next to you. They scared to save me. It's a setup. Don't save me again. Oh, yeah, amen. Amen. Now, Hannah, she prayed in the hall. She was praying for a child. Her enemy was vexing her. She was just crying. She was talking to the Lord. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she had been drunk. He thought she was a drunkard because she wasn't speaking out loud. So it was customary to speak out loud in prayer in the temple in the Old Testament. And when you did speak out loud, it got the, 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 the priest looked at you like you had prayed. She don't let it go. What's wrong with her? Baby, open up your mouth and say something. What's wrong? Do I need to cast the devil out of you? Unless you're praying in the Holy Ghost, you can speak to yourself. But people need to hear what you're saying. You might be saying the devil is Lord. Uh-uh. Not in you. I want to hear what you're saying. I want to hear, I want to hear what you're saying. If you're speaking in tongues, I want to hear what you're saying. Oh, I, I may, you might be speaking to yourself because I may tip over there and say, she's speaking in tongues and what she doing over there? Okay. I'm going to find out what she doing. Yeah. yeah. But guess what happened? And Eli said to her, how long would thou be drunken? Put away that wine from me. That's right. And Hannah answered and said, oh, she spoke. Her voice. <laughs> she spoke in Oh, Hannah spoke in the temple. Oh, what about them brothers? You can't speak in the temple. Oh, she spoke in the. She's 
spoke in the temple. Yes. And he didn't think she was crazy no more. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a softer spirit. I, I, I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul unto the Lord. Count not thy handmaid to be a daughter of Belial, of Baal. For out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken to the two. Then Eli said, Okay, you ain't, you ain't drunk. And then Eli answered, He spoke back to him. And answer, Eli answered and said, I know, go in peace. And God, and the God of Israel, grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. She spoke in the temple. And he didn't rebuke her for speaking. He rebuked her for being quiet in her prayer. Well, oh, I got scared now. What about the hip? They said, you can't speak. You can't speak in the temple. Well, how do you get the same in the temple? You can't speak. How do you get the same? How do you get to testify in the temple? Now, okay, go back to chapter 11. How do you get to prophesy in the temple without? Then it say prophesy a woman that prophesies right. with her head uncovered, her prayer with her head uncovered. She right. got open her mouth to pray, right? Yes. She got open her mouth to prophesy in the temple, right? right? So that is not what that's talking about. I believe God done that because there was some women that was out of order and was constantly talking in the temple. Oh my goodness, the preacher going for me, and everybody having a conversation. You know, women, I ain't trying to be naked. Y'all love to talk. Oh, we, did you know what happened, child? You saw what happened, my neighbor. You know what? What? what that you need to be quiet in the temple. That's <laughs> what he said. I believe it. And he said, "Such said the law. There ain't no law in the Old Testament to say that. That must have been a local law mm. ordinance. Amen." Oh, now y'all, y'all like, yeah, pal, y'all just, he's over the top now. He telling us that we can't talk, and I don't know what he's talking about. He said we can talk, and then sometimes he said we can't talk. Why don't you go back to the table? Look at it. Amen? Let me let you, let me let you know something. God, the word of God encouraged the people of God to obey the laws of the land. Amen. It encouraged them to do it. If it was lawful, yes. Do it if it was lawful. Do it. Obey the laws of the land. If it's not going to be quiet, just be quiet. Amen. Amen. First Peter chapter 2, verse number 13 and 14. We all we almost done. Somebody said, I'm getting sweaty now. I'm getting tired. <laughs> yeah, you get hungry. And somebody start thinking about it. I got some food on. Yeah, you think about that too. First Peter chapter 2, verse number 13 and 14. Submit yourself to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Whether to the king as supreme or as unto the governors as unto them that are sent by him for the what? The punishments of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. Amen? Amen. Drop down to verse 18. First Peter chapter number 2 and verse 18. Now we finna go right now. We getting finna get serious right now. For all you brothers that think that women can't talk in the church, you must believe in slavery too. You probably believe in slavery too. Yeah. I'm serious. If you that crazy, I'm, I'm God forgive me. God forgive me. I'm sorry to say you're crazy. Jesse. If you that narrow-minded to believe that, <laughs> you believe in slaves too. Do you have any slaves at home? <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Why? Because the Bible tells you. Okay, first, okay, first Peter chapter two and verse eighteen. Let me read that. I want y'all. Y'all don't believe it's in the Bible. Come on now. <laughs> That's not the one I'm looking for. It tells them to be obedient to the slaves, the ones that own slaves. Is that 7 Peter chapter 2 and verse 18? Let me see that. Amen. It said, for it speak great sort of now. That's not it. Talks, it tells them for to be obedient to the slave owners. Yes. Is it 18? Go ahead and read it. You got a woman to read it. I 
how many of y'all got some slaves at home? How many of y'all work on a plantation? How many of y'all gonna let somebody put you on the plantation? I don't even like driving on Plantation Street. I, don't, I ain't gonna live in no plantation home. Oh, 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 nobody here. If y'all live in plant, hey, it's all good. It's, it's, it's all good. If you live in, uh, in the plantation apartments, it's good. All is well. I'm saying I ain't. If you want to give me a plantation cup of water, I don't want it. It's sound facetious, though. Mama, mama just said, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. I'm pulling up right now. Pull up. Okay. But see, the Bible told them during that time, if you was a slave, to obey your master. Because at that time, slavery was legal. It was lawful. But Paul said in another place, but if you get free, use that belt. That's right. That's right. Got that right. Let me buy it. <laughs> buy myself out of here. I got to put penny, every penny I make. But see this. It was for then, y'all. Right. We don't have no, we better not have no slave plantation. If they got, I'm going to definitely cause, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm tell it, I'm going to tell it, I'm going to tell it, I'm going to tell it. If you ever come around me at Walmart and tell me that you got to go back to your plantation, I'm calling the popo right here. I'm calling the popo right here. We are almost done. Amen? Amen? Acts chapter number 1, verse number 13 through 14. So I'm just trying to see that was the law at that time. Dude, is it making sense now? Is it making sense now? One brother come call me and he said, uh, uh, uh. I, me and my pastor want to come down there and talk with you. Uh, you know, they, they was, they was, um, oh Lord, help me, Jesus. They, they was black Israelites. Number one, I said, I got to check my birth certificate. They said, I'm just black. They don't say nothing about Israelites. I, I don't know. I, I, the brother tried to talk to me. He said, me and my pastor want to come talk to you. I said, I ain't talking to y'all. I said, I said, they got you broke, bro. They got you twisted, man. They lied to you. I told him to his face. They lied to you. They lied to you. I'm talking about we the black people or we the true people of God. We are true people of God. When God formed man, he formed man out of the dust of the ground. You go back and read that. That was Genesis chapter number one and two. Some dust is light, like on the beach, and some dust, dust is dark. And some dust is red, like the red tar hills of Mississippi. All dust is come from the bit that pins on the ground where it came from. Black, I'm you know, black Israelite. Right. You know, we, you know, you got to keep the law. Oh, I'm scared of you. I said, they got you dope. They got you twisted. They lied to you. I'm talking about an hour on the phone telling them, man, you twisted. I told you the truth about ten times. <laughs> they brainwash you. Before y'all look at me like I'm crazy. Do you know you can, people that can brainwash you with their words? Yeah. That's right. That's true. Hitler brainwashed a whole country That's right. with his word. Maybe the folks think the fools think they can take on the whole world. And the whole world crushed them. Right. I'm serious. You think people can't pray and watch you with that? And if they ever find out that you're weak for words, oh, that's right. they, got, they got something for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Lord, let me finish it. Let me finish it. Amen. Let me finish it. Okay, Acts chapter number two, verse number one. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they was all together in one place. And some of them came to stop me. Oh, Lord. How long have I been going, y'all? I'm trying to finish up. Right. John chapter, let's go. Let's go John chapter 21 real quick. Then we'll go to Acts. John 21. I'm gonna try to be quick. Oh, help me. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. John chapter 21. Amen. Amen. John chapter 20, yeah. John chapter 20. Now, in the first day of the week, after Jesus was crucified, coming to Mary, Magdalene, and every and everyone that was uh, that, that was it was yet dark, and the sepulchre was uh, was in. And, 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 let me slow down. And see if the stone taken away from the sepulchre. 
and she running and coming to Peter and, and to the other disciples whom, whom she beloved and said and whom, whom Jesus whom Jesus beloved and, and, and said unto them, they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have taken and laid him. And Peter therefore went forth and, and that other disciples and came to the sepulchre, and they ran both together. And the other disciples did outrun Peter because he was quicker. And came first to the sepulchre. And he and he stood it down and looking at in and saw a delivery out called the land, yet went he not in, then come and Simon. And followed him and went into the, the sepulchre and seen the linen cloth lie and the napkins. And then it was about that was about his head, not lying, not let's say not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in the place by itself. Then went in also the other disciples, which came first to the sepulchre, and, and, and he saw and believed. For ye, for it says, as yet they knew not. The scripture that he must what rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again into their own country, on their own house. But Mary yeah. stood weeping, stood without the sepulchre weeping. And she wept. She stooped down and looked into the sepulchre and see two angels in white clothing. Yeah. Who would have been sent forth the priest that he had rose from the grave? If they would have stood around and waited a little bit, it would have been Peter. Right. It would have been the other, the other disciple crowds. But they didn't wait. They got yonder. Yeah, he you know, you know, he yeah. So wait, let's go. Mary was weeping. Right. Mary was crying. She wanted to see Jesus. She wanted to see Jesus. She wanted to see Jesus. Yeah. Amen? Amen. And she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre and said, and then did sit the two angels, okay, with white clothes, and the one uh, at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had laid. And they, and, and, and they said unto her, woman, why weeping thou? And she said unto them, because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had done saying, she turned herself back, and she and, and saw Jesus standing. And knew not that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why weeping thou? Whom seeketh thou? And she supposed him to be the, the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him death hence, tell me which thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said unto her, Mary. Yeah. And she turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Yeah. And Jesus said unto her, Touch me not. For I am not yet ascended to my father's and to go to our brother and say unto them, I ascend to my father and to your father and to my God and your God. Amen? Amen. And Mary came and told the disciples that he had seen, that she had seen Jesus. And they had spoken these and, and he had spoken these things with them. And they didn't believe him. The one that God used first to tell and to preach and to proclaim. When you preach, you proclaim the good news. Right? That's right. Amen. Was Mary. Amen. He used Mary. He didn't use Peter. He didn't use the other disciples that he loved. He used Mary because she cared apparently enough, long enough to stick around and get her go to the end of the story. Amen. Now come on. Now, now let's go to Acts. I just want to mention that he used the woman. Yes, he did. He used the woman, man. Men that don't believe women can do nothing except have babies. He used the woman. Acts chapter number one, no, chapter number two, verse number eleven. On number one. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they was all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Amen. 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 Oh Jesus. Who was in the upper room? Before we go to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 1, verse number 13. And when they was come together, they went up into the upper room. I gotta go back to Acts chapter 1, verse 13. Where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew. Verse 13, Acts chapter 1. Andrew and Philip and Thomas and Bartholomew and Matthew and the sons of Alphaeus, okay, and the Simon of Zeli, and Judas, the brother of James. These are continued with one accord in prayer and supplications with the women. Yes. Yes. With the women. And Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with, the, uh, with his other brother. Now, they was in upper room, right? Right. Acts chapter 2 tell you what happened in upper room. That's right. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, it was all, it was coming together. 
and they was all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. They was having church. Whenever we get together to pray and see God faith, we have a church. So they was praying. Oops, these women was praying in the church. And they appeared under them clothing tongues like as a fire and set up on each of them. And they was all filled, everybody now, with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them up. And that was one of the Jews devout men out of every nation on earth. Now, when this is now the problem, the all two came together and was confounded because that every man heard him speak in his own tongue when he was born. And they was all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these that speak Galileans? And how hear we every man? Every man in, in his own tongue, where, wherein we were born, both Parthians and Medes and Elamites and dwellers of Mesopotamia, and in Judea and in Cappadocia and Pontus, and Asia and Phrygia and Pamphylia, and in Egypt and were parts of Libya, and Cyrene, strangers of Rome, Jews, proselytes, priests and Arabians. We do all in the speak the, the what? In our tongues, the wonderful works of God. Amen? Amen. The one that was in the upper room was filled with the Holy Ghost, and that means women too. Acts chapter number, First Peter chapter number three, verse one through seven. We almost done. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You gonna encounter folks out there that believe stuff like this, right? And I'm just trying to prepare you so you don't get a long, long conversation thinking that they right and they got some deep revelation. The reason why they got a revelation because they don't have to read the whole Bible. Right. Precept must be upon precept, line must be upon line. He a little bit of that, but let him. I ain't talking with you nor your pastor. I ain't talking with y'all. Pastor, you ain't got coming up to read any reason with y'all. Y'all believe some kind of praise though? I'm offend somebody when I see it. They're gonna gonna lose somebody on YouTube. Oh well, I just lost you. (laughs) See you. Wouldn't want to be here. First Peter chapter number three and verse nine. Amen. Amen. All right, go ahead and read, preacher. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 1 says, like, Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may be, that they also may be, may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. He Whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of the plating of the hair and of weighing of gold or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. For after this manner, In the old time, the holy women also, who trusted in God, adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. Even Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. Likewise, ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife, as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Thank you, sir. Amen. Your prayers can be hindered. You don't treat your wife right. Amen. How do you give honor to your wife? You give her your checkbook. Uh-huh. <laughs> you give your check card. <laughs> Whatever Mama J want, if I got in the bank, she can have it. Right. I ain't holding her back from her. Right. She can have it all. Right. Had all these children for me, the devil is alive. She can have whatever she wants. Hallelujah. Amen. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. You better give honor to that wife. You better treat that woman right. Yes. Had your children. Yeah. Amen. Honor her. Treat her nice. I ain't getting enough. 
<laughs> the Lord heard your voice. Yes, he did. The Lord heard you already. He heard that I ain't getting a nothing. You know your heart. These are chapter 5, verse 1 through 8. We all know that. I heard I, I feel that in the spirit. Help, Lord, help. We almost done. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 through 8. And the Bible says, Be therefore followers of me as I, as, as as followers of God as their children. And walk in love. Amen. As Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for what? A sweet savoring, uh, sweet smelling, okay, savoring. For fornication and all uncleanness and covetousness. Uh, let it not be one thing among you as become the same. Neither be what filthiness, the foolish talking, no gesturing, amen. Is that what's it? No gesturing, uh, uh, not convenient, but rather the giving of thanks. Yeah, and, and for this, you know that no un, no homeowner, an uh, unclean person, or covenant man, whom is an idolater, may have any uh, inheritance in the kingdom of God yeah. and in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Amen? Yes, amen. 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 Yes, Lord. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let me go. See, I've been going so quick writing this stuff down. Let me drop over to the next one, uh, which is over there in verse number 22. Giving thanks always to, to uh, unto God, the Father, and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Submit yourself one to another in the fear of the Lord. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husband as unto the Lord. Yeah. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Yeah. And he is the what? The Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject in under Christ, so that the wife be subject to her own husband and everything. I know he sound crazy. Some of the stuff that your man do, he sometimes sound crazy as two love, like Looney to him. Listen to him. Listen to what God has told and given him. Your husband knows some stuff too now. Amen. But you gotta listen to him, amen. Amen. I know some of you women back here don't know nothing. But he knows some stuff. Amen. So listen to him. Amen. Husband, love your wives. Even as Christ loved the church yes. and gave himself for it, that we that he might but sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water. Amen. Yes. That he might but present it to himself a glorious church, not at a spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be what holy yes. and without blemish. Amen. So all men to love their wives as their own bodies. Yes. He that loves his body, loves he that loves his wife, loves himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh. That's right. But nourish it and cherish it. Even as the Lord, the church. Yes. Amen. Amen. All his bow, all his Anyone who's proud of that, please God will proud.